These are the sounds associated with most hospitals. It's, it's this just constant pervasive background noise. ICU doctor Joseph Schlesinger says he's grown desensitized to the wall of sound. You know, I go home at night and I hear this beeping in my head and uh, it's, it's incredibly fatiguing. The sound in an ICU or operating room has led to critical illness or worse. So an FDA survey found that over a four-year window, these kinds of problems were actually implicated in the deaths of 566 patients. Along with McMaster Associate Musical Professor Michael Schutz, they're trying to change the sound of medical devices. The point I'm making is that if they're going to be sounding a lot, and we have a situation where we can control the sounds that we're using, there's no reason to choose sounds that we know are more annoying. Schutz and Schlesinger are taking the old melodies and changing the standard beeping to something more musical. So you can hear the connection. If you're already able to recognize this, you should be able to recognize this pretty easily. But it's considerably less annoying. But they're not just trying to make sounds less annoying, they're trying to make them more informative. What information can you communicate in that sound and have benefit across different sensory domains? Their research shows that if sounds are more closely associated with specific bodily functions, health professionals respond quicker. Let's have this pointer that tells you it's an alarm, but have a lubbed up sound, like your heart beating. So then you know it's a cardiovascular problem. Schutz says calling them alarms contributes to the problem. Dale Manukduk, CHCH News, Hamilton.